just handed back the VTR1000 SP1 RC51 to Owen and I'm back on my 2003 954 Fireblade and immediately my hands are a lot higher well I say a lot higher that bit higher so I don't feel as pushed forward as I was on the SP1 it feels that bit more comfortable front brake is a little bit less powerful the anti-dive on the SP1 made it a little bit more comfortable to use a bit sharper but the smoothness at low down revs I'm sitting at 3000 revs now which as I said a million times on the SP1 just felt terrible if I change up even sitting at 2500 revs it's comfortable Even sitting at 40 mile an hour in sixth, it's comfortable. It's not jerky. It's nice and smooth. The gearbox just feels that little bit more precise, smoother, nicer selection. Taking a little bit of time just to get used to back, used to how the, the power comes in before I start really to open her up. Totally different power delivery. It's constant it's from start to finish. I don't think I've got past 8,000 revs there but it was building and building and building the whole time with the SP1 it's an instant kick with this it's a smooth nice delivery on the motorway definitely feel the wind more than I did on the SP1 definitely feel like I'm being battered about a bit more. Back out on the 954. Honda Fireblade CBR 954RR to be exact. So this is my daily or my usual ride. After having uh, Owen's SP1 my first real ride out on it I went up to meet Mr McGuinness only a 15 minute ride a couple of weeks back and I'm off to meet him again so I've got something for him to sign um, down in Pevensey Eastbourne which is about an hour away from me horrible roads greasy leaves everywhere wet I've normally tucked the bikes away by now sort of end of September normally put them away lock them up or do any start doing any work that needs to be done on them this needs a lot of work well I say a lot of work it needs it needs two new tyres motorways have absolutely killed it handles well for a 954 it handles badly but it still handles well um, they don't lean it anywhere I had a moment coming on the, the M23 just a minute ago where it decided to wheel speed uh, wheel, uh, about 65, 70 mile an hour coming onto the 23. So yeah, back on it though. Nice, smooth power curve. I don't miss about the SP1 that sitting at 4,000 revs all the time. The drone noise, it's this. A motorway journey like this, I mean, it's not very nice as it is, but even worse on an SP1, let alone the sort of push forward position. I never thought I'd say that the 954 is more of an upright position bike, but that's exactly what it is com in comparison to the, uh, the 
VTR 1000 SP1. This is a boring little motorway journey, so I'm going to capture some bits and bobs around uh, Honda in Pevensey while Mr McGuinness is there. And uh, then hopefully come back with a few uh, country roads and, and capture this, if it'll let me, corner half decently. I mean, I know the VTR sounds lovely, but that ain't too bad, is it? So a bit more uh, country roads this time. Well, I say country roads, it's still pretty much A roads, but a bit better than the uh, motorways of the A23 and M27. So how does it feel coming from an SP1 after a month, jumping onto a 954? It's more comfortable. It's easier on the motorway. It's a bit more blustery. You can feel the wind a lot more, but it's easier to use on the motorway. You're not worried about gears all the time as much as you are on the SP1. Handling is still fantastic. I think the SP1 just pips the 954 on the on the handling front. That could be down to tyre choice. I've got a a cheap set of Avons that I was someone gave to me just that they had going spare, knowing that I was going to be doing a lot of motorway. I didn't really think it was worth spending a fortune on tyres for them to get completely squared off. That would. Uh, remain to be seen, depending on the tyre choice I'll, I'll go with once I've changed these ones, but not just in, in terms of tyres, I don't know if it's that little, that one degree of rake the SP1's got over this, but it just feels that bit more stable, bit more forgiving, more stable in the corners, and it just feels 
less twitchy. This is quite a twitchy bike, even with the steering damper. I mean, I don't particularly like having the settings on the steering damper that high. I haven't really, really low, but it sort of defeats the object for me. You've got a quick steering bike and you're, and you're slowing it down with a damper. You just learn to to deal with how that bike handles. It's made that way for a reason. These are supposedly the fire blade to have. I'm sure people will disagree with that. And I think the twin, the SP1, is the twin to have. So have I got the two Hondas to have in quotation marks? Well, the only thing I can say about an SP1 is this is faster and lighter than the SP1 I had for a month and I've just gone out and bought myself an SP1 because speed outright speed isn't what it's all about because obviously we'd all just have S1000Rs probably character I think a lot of people want character not just in bikes but in cars as well they have a choice in a car because of the character it has and the prevalence that, and the SP1's got that in spades thanks to Colin Edwards if I had to pick one I'd pick this the SP1's just got a bit more narrow, narrower 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 field of use really um, I've been asked if I do something up at Motorcycle Live next month. Details aren't all there yet, but it's very likely I'll take this. And that's in Birmingham. I'm on down by Gatwick Airport. Talking about a two and a half hour drive, so about a two hour ride. The SP1 is not a comfortable bike on the motorway. It's not a comfortable seating position. I know my wrists are late. Whereas I know with this, it eats the miles. All right, I'm going to get buffed around by the wind on the motorway. But I can put up with that, I think. This will sit in any gear, at any speed. It's just that bit more practical. Which is mad, really, when you think the blade was never built to be practical. And when they skimmed this bike down, the 954, as much as they possibly could to save as much weight as they could on it to make it the lightest fire blade ever made and they bored what was then the 929 out that a little bit more just to give it a little bit more power so you're increasing your power you're decreasing your weight and you've got that 23.5 degree of rake Everything about it screams hooligan bike, but it's not. Perhaps that's down to the seating position. Again, I'll say I'm 5'9", 5'10", 13 stone. It's a sports bike. After an hour, I do start getting tingling in my fingers. I do sometimes get cramp in my legs. I'm not the fittest of guys. So, we're not talking about a sports tour here at all. It's still an out and out sports bike. It's just that bit more forgiving. Petrol wise, I'm so glad I'm back on a bike that I know will do at least 100, even if I'm thrashing it 100 miles to the tank, maybe 120, especially on a motorway. About 25 quid a tank of. Uh, High octane, 99 or 97, whatever you can get your hands on. I've got me, my clock back, so I, I know what time when the missus says the dinner's going to be ready. I've got my taco meter back. So as you can see there, I've set my taco meter today and I've done 73 miles. It's just those nice little luxuries got a nice, uh, I can keep an eye on the heat. I have seen some reviews on SP1s where people talk about how hot they get. 
I'll probably say I can feel a little bit more heat on my legs on this and I've never at any point felt that overheating was a problem on the SP1. I'm not even sure if I heard the fans get cut in. So yeah, if I choose one, I choose this. Very close. It's a nice choice for me to have. I, feel, I do feel very lucky. I'm not the richest guy in the world and I'm not one of these guys that's got multiple bikes sitting around like a lot of people do, but I think I've chose well a couple of years ago picking this up at a good price. Had a lot of fun just at the start of COVID when I picked it up. I had a lot of fun through lockdown when the roads had, were dead. And as I was uh, a key worker, I was out and about on it all the time and going and picking stuff up from the shops, queuing up. Remember those days? It was a little godsend, this. But I think at some point, this bike needs to come off the road and I want to do a nut and bolt restoration on it. I want to get it back to its former glory. It's not the dirtiest of bikes, it's not the most scratched or battered around bike, but if it's a bike I'm going to sit on for a long time, if it's a bike I'm going to sit on for a long time, I think it's worth me uh, putting in a, a few quid, getting it perfect, and maybe next year, because the, the SP1 I've got, it's only got 22,000 miles on it, I think I've probably done about 3,000 miles on this, this summer, extending out to sort of October. I wouldn't mind putting 3,000 miles on the SP1. 25,000 miles is still low miles for me. For an SP1, anyway. Um, yeah, so I put up a quick video at the end of this of, of what my new SP1 looks like. It didn't run when I bought it, hence why I got it cheap. My good old trusty Honda Fireblade tank popped onto the SP1 because I suspected it was the fuel pump. Hooked this up and it started straight away racking my brains for a while because the guy was convinced it was the alarm so I put, ripped the alarm off and still nothing but yeah fuel pump which is on its way um, and that'll be get fitted and the SP1 will go through a winter of tidying up there'll be more videos from me guys so please like and subscribe Hit that little bell button so when I put up another video you can go, ah, Mr. Hero Man, or Alex as normal people know me. Let's put up another video, let's have a look what he's up to now. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you're going to pick one, SP1 on 954, pick the 954. Thank you.